We pushed the limit. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. Today we're gonna have some fun working with this awesome Kubota. This is a Kubota RTV X1140. We're gonna walk around it today. We're gonna show you some of the features of it. This thing is on demo from Rocky Mount Tractor up in Virginia, and we're probably gonna end up purchasing it. So come along today on the farm vlog as we take you around and show you a no-nonsense kind of farmer's review of the Kubota RTV X1140. All right? I ain't afraid to work, I ain't afraid to play, I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way, I ain't afraid of lying. Before we get started talking about the RTV here, I want to tell you a little bit about myself because I think it's important. We are on the Stony Ridge Farm. This is a 200 acre farm that we're taking back. In other words, this was an overgrown, dilapidated tobacco farm that had basically been farmed to death. We're clearing land, we're cutting timber, there's all sorts of fun stuff going on all the time. So if you like this kind of content, pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll take you along on our journey from taking an old piece of dilapidated land and making it beautiful and making a profit on it as a farm. It's gonna be cool. So what I'm looking for in a utility vehicle for our farm is something, first of all, usable. Second of all, fun. Third of all, easy to maintain. Fourth, it needs to have good utility, meaning I need to be able to haul personnel and I need to be able to haul equipment and I need to be able to pull. I need to be able to work with this machine. I also want the option, if I want to take it for a trail ride, I want to be able to hop on this machine and go for a trail ride. I want to take my wife up to the top of that mountain right over there and watch the sunset in the evening. So it's not all about work, it's a little bit about recreation too. And that's what this machine does for you. It's a recreation machine, it's a workhorse, it's just a stout little beast. So what we have on the farm now currently is a John Deere Gator 825i two-seat model. And what we found is that we want to take people and show them our beautiful farm and all the work that we've done on our farm and we didn't have enough seats so we would have to take people one at a time around in the gator to show off the farm or to show people where the creek is or haul people around so we needed four seats that's why we're looking for the bigger machine now we wanted a diesel machine because we wanted consistent fuel on the farm all the tractors are diesel the gators gas so we're carrying around gas cans trying to fill up a five gallon gas tank with the gator when I've got a hundred gallon fuel tank on the back of my truck for fueling up tractors. So now we'll have fuel consistency here on the farm. Something that's important because fighting those gas cans is just a pain in the butt. Now we're all gonna have small engines on our property or on our farm and we're all gonna have to deal with little gas cans for say your chainsaw or for say your pressure washer. But having a little bit of fuel consistency on the farm with your utility vehicles and with your utility tractors really makes a difference and it's a big time saver. So without further ado, we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of what this machine is all about and why we like it and why we're thinking about purchasing it for our farm. We moved, we're up here by our corn garden. This is our upper garden here and we've yet to plant it. We're a little bit behind on planting our gardens this year. We're gonna do a nose to tail kind of walk around with this machine. We're gonna talk about everything from the tires to the roof to the windshield to the bed to the dump everything. So let's talk about fit finish and the feel. So it feels tough. It's got a nice tough bumper. We opted for the type of tire. It's an industrial type tire. There are several different tire options from an ATV type tire to a turf type tire. Walking around the operator station you have a nice wide area to get in and out of the vehicle and a lot of leg room and space right here so you can really stretch out. This is the back seat area and all of this will fold forward and double the size of the bed. Now the bed this size is probably about three quarters the size of the John Deere Gator 825i when it's folded up but it is huge once we fold it all down. Let's walk around the back. Fit and finish wise, everything's good. It has tail lights on it that burn whenever your headlights are on. It's a diesel model, of course. Very, very nice. We didn't opt for fancy wheels or anything like that. We just want a basic utility vehicle to get the job done here on the farm. 
What you really need to think about while we're going over this is that this machine is based on a tractor platform, not on a UTV Polaris type platform. This is based on a workhorse type platform. It's all hydrostatic. It's not belt drive. It's not shaft drive. It's hydrostatic drive like a tractor. So starting with the bumper on the front, you have a two inch receiver here on the front. You have a mount for winch right here and it tells you where to mount the winch and everything like that. You've got a opener for the hood right here. We'll slide that and open it up. The hood raises up. You don't have to prop the hood. You have a hydraulic cooling area and an engine coolant area and you also have a pre-filter screen. Super duper nice to have for a farm machine. This is something that you're supposed to check every day, especially if you're in tall grass. Also comes stock with a horn. Here is your air cleaner system. Over here is your overflow for your engine coolant. And right here is your brake reservoir. And you can see your headlights in here are easily accessible. You've got nice, big, robust headlights. Very nice, just like a car. Let's move around here to the operator station. So you've got some cool levers here that do a lot of different things. This is your locker lever. In other words, this is the diff lock, which locks all four wheels into place. You would press that with your foot and you would pull up the diff lock and that would lock it in place. And you can see that will lock all four wheels in place so that if you get stuck or if you're really, really pulling hard, all four wheels will be locked. You can push that back down and that releases your diff lock right here. You got a couple cup holders, creature comforts here. Very, very nice. Little creature comforts over there. You have a fully lockable glove box that is watertight. So things won't get dusty and won't get wet in there. You've got a 12 volt charging outlet. Let's turn the key on. If we turn the key a quarter of the way, that will turn on our glow plugs. And you can see right here, whoop, that's our glow plugs. Then we start. This is the information that's provided, fuel, temperature, how many miles and how many miles per hour. Now, when you turn the key off, you get different information. We'll turn the key back on and you'll see how many engine hours you have, which is important for when you do your services. You have four wheel drive actuation, which is right here. Basically, you just push forward and that engages your four wheel drive. That's out, that's in. Just that simple and it doesn't take up a whole lot of floor space right here. You got your horn, which is my favorite feature. <laughs> very, very simple to operate. It must be in neutral to start. You've got high, low, and reverse. Reverse will go 17 miles an hour. High will go 25, and low will go 15, I do believe. Something that's fairly unique to this model is the parking brake is right up here on the dashboard, out of the way, out of the way of getting in and out of the vehicle. It's totally out of the way, so you're not hanging your pants leg, and it's not in the way of your feet. Very, very handy. Here is your own off switch for your lights. And if we buy this machine, we're gonna put some awesome light bars on here so we've got some extra little spots to put our switches in right there. Now, as we all know in America here, we're not getting any smaller <laughs> as people. So look at how much room. I am six foot five. I have a huge amount of headroom. And one of the coolest features of this UTV is the tilt steering. So there's a little lever. I actuate that lever and I can pull my steering down and have it right here. When I get ready to get off the vehicle, I can bring my steering back up and easily get in and out of the vehicle. When you have a utility vehicle like this on your farm, you're jumping in and out of it all day long, basically. This will be the most used tool on the farm. The John Deere Gator right now is the most used tool on our farm. Now let's talk about more creature comforts. Here is the back seat. Once again, guys, I am a six foot five dude, 260 pounds. This thing is super duper roomy. The back seat actually sits about this much higher than the front seat. So you're not staring at the back of somebody's head while you're riding around on this thing. You've got some nice bars right here to hold on to. Hold on here, hold on here. It's very robust. Again, I am a big guy and my legs have plenty of room right here. Awesome. Now we'll show you the bed in the two seat configuration with just the front seats and we'll show you the bed in the four seat configuration. We'll show you how it all transforms. We also have some storage areas I want to show you. Let's talk about utility vehicles and storage. This has become more and more of a priority as technology advances with these utility vehicles. So you have a lockable watertight and dust tight dash board. You have a flip up seat with a big tray underneath here. You also have this entire seat 
flips up and in here we've got some koozies in here right now you have another storage tray now you can fold this all up and this storage tray will remove in order to access things underneath the vehicle such as the hydraulic reservoir very simple and you can take it and hose it out if it gets dirty so let's talk about one of the most important features here the cargo bed we've got a full five feet wide this is with the seats flipped up so you have four seats it's five feet by 26 inches now we're going to show you how this converts over to a two-seater model by flipping the seats for it it's really really simple so what you need to know is that this dumps in the short configuration and in the long configuration so in other words you can use it as a dump bed even with the four seats in place now the first thing we want to do is we want to flip up our seat cushions so up goes our seat cushions very easy one-handed then there's a lever right here we'll pull that lever we'll slide the seat forward just like so it will latch into place so that locks firmly into place then on each side of the machine there is a lever and you pull that lever and it sits in a little slot right here you lay your bed down very easily very gently no problems there you raise this portion up and over here and that extends your bed inside here there's a little lever that will push in and lock it in place i'll show you so the bedside simply opens up it has a little catch right here you'll push it into place pull this little lock back and boom she snaps right in and pushes into her slot just like so your bed is firm and sturdy now we were really concerned about the leakage factor leaking down onto the seats right here Kubota has gone to extreme measures to make sure that if you put mulch or dirt or something like that in here, it's not going to spew out all over the floorboard and all over the seats and all over the important things that are underneath this. It's pretty cool. A lot of thoughts gone into this machine. This is a monster of a bed. It's probably four inches bigger on either side than the John Deere Gator. It is huge. So here is the dump lever right here. There is a little locking flap right here that keeps you from being able to move this accidentally. You move that lock out of the way, you pull up on the lever, and you can do this with one finger very easily. Raise it all the way up, we dump. We go all the way back down. We can just push down until it goes down or we'll raise it back up and do this again you can push down to float so it automatically goes all the way down and we unlock it from float and we lock it back in position so it's good to go so one thing you got to take into consideration with this machine is that the bed is hydrostatically controlled in other words the engine needs to be running in order for it to dump back it also means that it has a lot more dumping power and it can leap up really really fast now again we're in the market for a new utility vehicle for our farm and one of the huge selling points is the large bed the extra large bed on this thing it's almost as big as a small pickup truck bed the dumping capability of this thing the hauling capability and then it's hydrostatically controlled and it's also power steering so it's easy for my wife to drive now let's get under here but before we get under here let's get our safety mechanism off of the bed this little thing is tethered to the bed and it blocks your hydraulic cylinder from closing down on you and squishing you super duper awesome a lot of thoughts gone into this and there's a grease fitting on here so you can grease most every moving part on this machine again based on a tractor platform you raise this up you can access some grease fittings and you also have access to your hydraulic oil checker right here and this is where you fill your hydraulic oil there's also a hydraulic oil tank under the passenger seat right here are your seat belts so when you fold the seat back down you can get to your seat belts now if you look right here this seat belt would normally be sticking up where it would impact the bed these things rotate down to get out of the way again lots of thought lots of engineering underneath this panel which just pulls right up is the engine take that engine cover off right under here we can fill our engine we can change our oil and we can reach right here and we can check our oil which we should probably do every time before we start the machine so here at the rear of the machine you can see the transmission there's a guard plate right here in case you back up into something we're actually probably going to order a bumper setup for this thing and then there's another two inch receiver right here and an anti-sway bar that goes right across right here to keep you from swaying just like that you also have the same similar cv boot setup in the back right here so the machine that we 
have has the composite top and it has the mirror set up so when you look back you can see out the bed and make sure that you're not about to run into something that mirror basically reflects right down in here you can see the windshield that we have right here it's not a tilt windshield but it does have air conditioning check this out so if you want air flow through the vehicle you just loosen this up and you can slide this guy simply back and forth no air air that's your air conditioning pretty cool let's talk about three things let's talk about fit and finish ride quality and my opinion the fit and finish on this machine i am a former military guy i'm a former member of law enforcement i have an attention to detail and let me tell you that kubota has checks and balances in place that has made this thing right and tight i can't find anything wrong i can't find a little piece of plastic hanging off anywhere this thing is absolutely on point when it comes to fit and finish this thing has a longer warranty than most machines it's a 24 month 1000 hour warranty which is something super duper awesome to really think about when you get into a machine like this about a year into it you're going to start wearing parts out that's something to really think about when we had our john deere gator it had a one-year warranty a fourteen thousand five hundred dollar piece of machinery with a one year warranty no way so we got a two year 24 month warranty awesome now for ride quality it rides stiff it doesn't ride stiff so it beats you to death and if it was a rattle trap no matter how many cool little features it has on it if it rattles and shakes like an old model t going down the road it most certainly won't be worth the money to have it on the farm so it rides smooth but it rides stiff the suspension is robust you can tell that underneath you is a robust piece of machinery that you can trust i really really like the suspension on this vehicle my opinion is that we're about 99.9 percent .9 sure after demoing this thing on the farm for a couple days that we're going to be replacing our john deere gator 825i with a machine that is highly superior to what we have now it's a diesel machine it has more torque it doesn't go as fast but i'm not here to race around the farm i'm here to get work done and that's what i want this machine for aside from the quality of this machine the second biggest driving factor is the expense of this machine for a comparable unit in another color of paint that i'm not going to mention you're going to be spending twenty thousand dollars where this thing is sixteen thousand nine hundred bucks coming out the door it's dollars and cents it's what works the best well folks i hope you've enjoyed this little walk around the kubota rtv 1140 i know i had fun i'm still having fun this thing is super duper fun to drive i cannot wait to put it to work on the farm if we end up buying the thing i think we may take it and get it wrapped like a custom stony ridge farm wrap i don't know if you guys have any ideas post them down there in the comments we'll see you guys next time on the stony ridge farm please on your way out the door don't forget pound that like button subscribe to the channel and share these videos if you like this kind of content We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. All right? We'll Woo! come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Well, <laughs> she's a pretty good hill climber. <laughs> I think it did pretty good on a steep hill. What do you think? It's impressive. <laughs> she doesn't know what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Think, honey? okay, I'm good. You good? I think we got it. Right no, no, no. No? I think we pushed the limit. <laughs> Did you know this thing had reclining seats? I guess so. <laughs> oh, good stuff. It's a machine, baby. <laughs> Woo! You can't have fun on a farm. It's not all work, right? That's right. <laughs> Woo!